Hello, everybody. We are back. Act two, the podcast, episode sixty-six. Trey, 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 Trey. We back in the building. Oh, Trey, 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 Trey. Okay. Trey, 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 Trey. You threw me off six, with six, that. Six, 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 six. I didn't want to go into the devil lingo. Sesenta y seis. Sesenta y seis. Danny, you're gonna be hype about that, bro. I said sesenta. He said something today. Sesenta. No, he said something oh. today, and I knew what he said. And I can't repeat what he said, but I knew he said, um, why your car door don't open? <laughs> I, knew, I knew he said that to Eddie. I was like, he asked you why your car door don't open. Eddie was like, you learning, you learning. Yeah. Um, La Puerto de Caro? Uh, something or like that. La Puerta. But we are back, episode also. 66, um, International Walk. It's your girl Taj, the co-hostess with the mostest. Yup, we back, and uh, you can catch us on all kinds of platforms. We run through this every week. We're on ten different platforms. Let's see if you can say it without looking. I can't. Okay. So all right. I am. We are <laughs> on act to the podcast dot com. You can catch the show there. You can catch us on Facebook. All our faces is on there. You can catch us on Instagram instantly. You can catch us <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you, you, when you, your, your word connections, your word association, you surprise me every time. I didn't I mean to disrupt you. You can catch us on YouTube, tubing. You can catch us on Google Podcasts, podcasting. You can catch us on Anchor, holding shit down. You can catch us on Radio Public, cause we out here. You can catch we us outside. on TikTok, cause we ticking with the talkers. You can catch us on Breaker because we breaking barriers. You can catch us on Spotify because we out here spotting shit. You can catch us on all those platforms. And we breaking generational curses. We definitely breaking generational <laughs> curses. We carry some shit that our parents put on us. But, yeah, that's another, a different conversation. <laughs> but we are breaking generational curses. Um, how are you today? Today, I'm a 10. Wow, your mental I, is a 10? My mental is... I'm going to clap for that. It's a, yes. it's a first time in 66 episodes. And really? At a 10. That I was at a 10? Yeah. My mental's at a 10. You know, um, God shows up and shows out. It, sometimes I feel like, okay, you know my faith, our faith. We share that with you guys. All those this isn't a religious show. It ain't nothing that I'm ever going to hide. Mm -hmm. I will be transparent and say... As much as I pray and I talk about praying, I probably don't pray as much sometimes. Like, I think sometimes I have lulls, and to me, it feels like God... Well, we he, pray every day. I mean, you we pray do... pray every day by yourself? Not every day. For real? No. Wow. I, like, I mean, you maybe in the smallest way... I feel in way, trouble if I don't pray every day. But, I mean, yeah. you pray every single morning. So, so, okay, there's some prayer going up to God every day. You pray every single morning. We hold hands before you leave. But I mean, like, to really have those conversations with God and pray, I don't. I have to... And, and I, I get mad at myself when I stop and think about it. Like, oh... Like, just like I, I, I chastise my sisters or I chastise Toya. If so many days went by and I don't hear from them, I feel like God be like, what's up, sis? Like, where you at? Like, you only hear when some shit wrong or but, but, your soul hurt. Well, no, I don't feel like that. But I do feel like sometimes I allow lulls where, I mean, I might talk to him. It might be a moment where I'm listening to music and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And I know, like, that's a prayer, too. Or, you know, thank you, God, or whatever. But to really have those conversations, I don't always. Uh, most of the time, my good, good prayers with God are when I'm laying down at night. When you fall asleep or I put you to sleep. <laughs> um, and you know, if you ain't put me to sleep, <laughs> I lay there and you know, I, I talk to God, but I say all that to say I'm at a 10 because you know, you know, we had a little situation yesterday and you, you can choose to talk about it as much as you want, but I feel like God uses those moments to get our attention. Mm -hmm. And when he does, no matter what you went through, when you get to the other side, knowing that it was only with, it was only because of him, it makes me feel better. I mean, and, and in addition to that, I was off work. Um, you know, I had some time off. We got vacation coming up. I have been consciously um, trying to find little ways to help me be in a better mental space because work has been kicking my ass. We've been good. Mm -hmm. We've been good, except for, you know, our little hiccup, but we've been good. So... I've been finding ways to help my mental. My jazz music, y'all be playing it throughout the Which house. Which is great, too. Like, I got I'm, him yeah, into it. Yeah, it's like the right kind of jazz where it's just like 
sit your ass down and just listen. And just be listen. Yeah. I don't know enough yet to and like I used really to come in and like oh my god she playing Beyonce again like oh my god like turn this shit off like I don't want to hear this but I don't it'd, it'd be like alright this is what's up yeah and I don't know enough about jazz yet to like try to give y'all no information I just listened to the Youssef Latif Pandora station and as I learn more about I know the sounds that I like that maybe I'll share with y'all but I say all that to say I'm at a 10 Okay. Mentally, yeah. Finances. Um, finances are a ten. I don't have any complaints. Damn. Yeah, I don't have any complaints. Got knocking them out the park. Work. Work. I'm gonna say is an eight. I'm gonna work say is, is an eight. eight. You know, and again, part of it is having some time off, and then mentally knowing that I have vacation come. We have vacation coming up. Um. Yeah, and I, I again, I, it takes effort, and I have to be. Um, I have to be intentional about the steps that I take not to allow the things to affect me. I just want to be happy and be at peace and be stress-free. So, yeah, that's how I What's your body feel like? <sighs> My body feels good today. I'm going to say I'm an 8. I did yoga today. Damn, you first. did 10, 10, 8, and 8. I'm feeling good. I I'm feeling you. good. Um, I did yoga today for the first time, mm -hmm. and... I, you know, we have a goal and I don't want to really talk about that goal because, you know, then people put pressure on you, but we just want to, we just want to be, um, our best self. So mm -hmm. we have a goal that I'm working towards. And even with, and, and with the, like the whole yoga, I used to love doing yoga regularly. And I know that I have been out of practice and I don't practice for any type of spiritual reasons. I know some people say, you know, yoga is against Christianity. I don't know nothing about that because I'm not. Know, that's what? Yeah, for, because I mean it's kind of tied into Hinduism in some way, I guess. With the chanting and all that stuff. I don't chant. I just stretch. But and I move. mean, is that the part? I that think they say? so. But because but, they don't understand the chants, they think you're calling in the spirits. Maybe so, and you might be. That's why I don't do it. Even at the end, when they tell you to say nam nam namaste or whatever, it is, I don't say it. I don't believe in saying or doing anything that I don't know specifically what it is. And I think is it namaste Spanish. No, that's like a, a, it's part of the yoga language. Okay, I don't know what language right. that is. I think I, um, I read one time and said like, I'm grateful for you or something like that. Yeah, I'm, eh. So your body is? My body's an eight. Okay. Yeah. 10, 10, eight, eight. Yeah. That's your girl's great. feeling good. How Damn. are you? I am. No. How are you? I'm. I'm better. I was I was I was not so good yesterday. Yeah, but yesterday is behind us. Yesterday is behind how us. How are you today? Today I am great. I how is you how are you mentally? Mentally I'm a nine. That's awesome. I'm not a ten, but I am a nine. That's awesome. Um finances, I am a nine. Mm. I can go with a nine in finances. Work, I am an eight. Okay. So I can go with eight there. Um How's work's your body? been kicking my ass oh. though. Like real bad. Work's been kicking my ass, but Got shit together the, um, yesterday and today. Yeah, but so you built for this, so of I know you'd be I good. Am, of course. And my body feel good. I feel great. I, um, I uh, yeah, I got vacation. We got vacation coming up. What's um, your number for your body? My body is an eight. I said that. No, you said my body feel good. You didn't uh, say a number. My body is an eight. So okay. what was my numbers? Nine, nine, eight, eight. 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 That's still, so that's, that's awesome. I'm but I want to double back to my mental because... I'm at a nine, but um, this ties into what I want to talk about as far as my mental. Yesterday wasn't so great, and because of that, we had a, um, not to sugarcoat it, a bad argument. And me, I want to talk about knowing how to fight and mm -hmm. with couples and people in love. And if you ever heard of that, knowing how to fight is very, very important because you're going to have instances in your relationship where you may lose your cool or you may act out your character which <clears throat> excuse me that was my issue yesterday where me and my wife got into an argument you know and I acted out of my character and was being demonstrative in a way where that's not like how we fight and it's not how I act towards her and um I want to acknowledge that here and say I'm extremely sorry for that, for, for showing you that kind of energy and being that way with you. Um, because no matter what's important to me as far as this show or anything that I that I, I say is important to me, there's nothing on this earth more important to me than you. And I apologize to you 
for giving you that kind of energy. But um, knowing how to fight, how important is that? Um, and I accept your apology. And I just want to say, too, you know, it's one of those things. And, and we speak our truths here. We'll be transparent. First of all, let's just clarify. Not that people's impression or what people think matters. But when we say knowing how to fight, knowing how to have an argument. Right. In no way, shape, or form do we mean no, physically not physical, fight. Not, no, I know, but you just, you know, maybe have to. I, I, don't, I didn't say that because that's like not us. It's never going to be I us. Know, but I understand We might have new you, viewers yeah, who I don't know who us. might be thinking, damn, he beat her. No, or, and you said being demonstrative. No. They're like, what did then he you demonstrate? Should go home, you should look up demonstrative and see Well, what but they might say, what did he demonstrate? Like, no. <laughs> so that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Say it. No, I didn't. But, but no. no, but and I, I say I, I just wanted to clarify that. But also to say, um, this is the thing. We're transparent on this show, and we speak our truths. We tell y'all some things about us. You know, I told y'all I don't wear deodorant. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need to wear deodorant. My body just is different. I got some other issues going on, so I don't need to wear deodorant. So we speak our truths. We tell y'all things about us. You know, we try. To it, it's a it's one thing about being discreet <coughs> and being secretive or <coughs> private. So, um, just in all transparency, we started doing <coughs> we started doing um, the show, and um, it kind of went downhill. And like he said, we got into a heated argument, and it was like, you know, it's okay if we disagree on the show. It's okay if. You know, we may we we have come before y'all sometimes to let it be known like it's some tension between right. us. And I'm sure y'all. But can this see it got sometimes. heated, and my thing was I ain't doing it because. And he's like, you know, this is my show. I want to do it. I don't care what's going on. And for me, as important as this show is to him, he's more important to me. I care about the show because he cares about it, but I cares about I care about him more than the show. And I did not want him to represent himself in a way that I knew wasn't him. I knew something was bothering my husband for the last few days. And it was just stress. Um, and it kind of like reached a boiling point where it came out, you know, the hollering and screaming. And anybody who knows us know that we... We probably have a bad argument like once every six months. Where, mm -hmm. but I'm not a holler. I'm not a screamer. And we've been working through that in counseling. I will walk away because she will shut down like um, a blind, like a shade, <laughs> like that. Like, like you blink your eyes. That's how she'll shut down. And and yeah, <clears throat> I know that. But I'm also working through therapy on how to channel my own anger and not be as vocal. And um, with the help of her still understanding that I'm a man and I project my voice too. So there's a point where I, I guess I have um, the right word, leniency. It's like, okay, I do speak loud, but yeah. there is a point where I am Where yelling. it crosses the line. Yeah, and and, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. like, so going back to what you said, how important is it to, is it, um, to know how to fight? It's important to know how to fight or how to have an argument or disagreement with your partner because what may be acceptable or okay in one relationship may be different in another relationship. So it's really important because... You don't think it's a standard? Like, you don't think, like, okay, in our relationship, like, I've never... We've never been in an argument and I called you a bitch or we've never been in an oh, argument yeah. where you, you called me a pussy or a bitch or something like that. Those are just things that we feel you can't say sorry for it. You can't come back from You can't unsay that. So you mean to tell me that's okay in another relationship? No, like, but what, but what I'm saying... I think it's still volatile. It's still problematic, but, like, they shouldn't be doing it. I think it's a standard on knowing I how agree, to fight. I but, agree, but we have to think, if, if in the other, if in somebody else's relationship, it's like, oh, we just said that we was mad, but we apologized. Right. If that's okay with y'all, then that's fine. For me... You know, one of the standards that we've always set is you can be as mad as you want. But remember, we need to love each other after this. Exactly. So don't say something that's going to put that love in jeopardy. Don't say something that's going to... And and this may sound a little bit... um I don't know if narcissistic is the word or um selfish. I will say sorry and take accountability for things that I've done wrong. I wasn't always great at it. I'm getting much better at it. But I will say, I don't like to say sorry if, like, I, I want to say what I mean. So I say that to say, that's why in the argument, I'm not going to call you names that I really don't mean and then have to apologize. Well, I'm not going to say stuff. You have a staunch um, line 
or a hard line that you hold, which is not necessarily good. Sometimes it's detrimental to us where you don't want to say sorry. And it's like, if you know in your heart of hearts that you were wrong and you can't deny it, you will say sorry. But if I have to explain to you, this is what you said or did, and this is why it hurt my feelings, you have to compartmentalize that, understand it, come to an agreement with yourself that, okay, now I understand why this hurt his feelings. I'm sorry. You know and it's what like, it is, damn, though? it's like, after all the years that we've been together, you would think... I'm not a person who runs to you every four hours saying you hurt my feelings right. and need you to say sorry. So when I do, it's like, damn, where's the B.O.D.? Like, he don't yeah. talk like this. If, if he's this saying he need a sorry, he really need a sorry. This is, I, I am getting better and learning that I don't need to understand everything. And you know, before, that's I, that's how I operated. Like, if you're telling me something, why? why do you, like, I did feel like I needed to understand to be able to accept it. But I think that comes from, I don't like empty apologies from anybody. So if I'm saying sorry, I want to, I don't want to just say it just because you want me to say sorry, because my actions aren't going to show that if I'm not truly sorry. So I think for me in trying to make sure that any apology is genuine, it's like, okay, let me really feel like I'm sorry so that not my words just saying it to you because you want an apology, but let you really see, like, damn, I really feel okay. that that it, that that's genuine from her. So, but take I'm, that I'm, format to say, though. Okay, so let's just say if um, you you said you like you need to understand. Let's just say, do you know what you're doing when you're asking a person that you say that that said you know you hurt my feelings? You asking them to relive it. It's almost, yeah. and I don't want to be as drastic as like if you're molested or something, and you ask somebody, you know, tell me what happened again. But you're making them relive it. So it's like, damn, you hurt my feelings and you trying to understand why. And you just explain why you poke and probe like that. But at the same time, you got to understand you making me go through the whole thing again. Right. I get that. And that's why and just I'm... keep that in mind also. Not just I got to understand. I got to understand. That's why I said <coughs> I'm learning to, not to be that way. And OK, so in a situation. In a, I mean, and it. Yesterday, this this has nothing to do with you know <coughs> in general. Um, in a situation, I now realize that whatever I said to you, my intent wasn't to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. So I can apologize that your feelings were hurt. I guess th the mm -mm, next mm -mm. that's where it goes wrong because you that's an empty apology to me because you say, oh. I heard what you said, but I'm sorry your feelings got hurt. But no, what if I'm, I really meant it? I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Not I, I'm sorry your feelings got hurt. Right. That's as backhanded as it can be. <laughs> okay, no. Like, what You're the right. fuck is that? I'm it's, sorry I'm I sorry hurt your I hurt feelings you. with the what I said. knowledge of, of I'm hurting your feelings and I'm sorry about it is the apology. And that I can give you. I'm sorry. So, in the case, I, I am learning to be able to apologize for hurting your feelings. Right. I, the next step in, in that is learning to recognize what I said and how I could have possibly said it different or did it differently so that then I can really make a, a change if, mm -hmm. I, if it's warranted so that it doesn't happen again. And so that's the part with me wanting to understand. It's like, okay, how, how can this be different under new circumstances? Because this time it hurt his feelings. Regardless of what I said, my intent is never to hurt your feelings. I may, I may be saying how I feel, but it's always a better way to do things. So, God, well, I think God aligned us like that where you have the need to understand and I have, like, the, the, the you know the one thing that bothers me the most is being you want to be understood yeah and it's like damn like why did how did we mesh like that and it's like when i I'm, need to when, understand when you're everything. asking me questions and poking and problem trying to get your understanding i'm my level is raising because i think that i'm being clear and i'm not being understood and the back and forth is like damn i'm trying to understand I feel like you're not listening and you're not understanding me. That's making me mad. You're getting mad because I'm not giving you the details you need. Because one of the things about you, and this is, now this is what I tried to explain to him yesterday. If I'm giving somebody instructions, I know what I want them to do or how I, or I, if I'm telling them how I feel, I know how I feel because it's coming out of my brain. That doesn't mean that 
the other person is just going to automatically understand it or grasp what I'm saying. To me, it's like, why don't you understand? Like, I'm telling you how I feel. But it, it makes sense to me that it should make sense to them because it's my brain. But sometimes you have to realize, like, everybody's brain is different, of course. And everybody's brain process is different. That's true. I'll acknowledge that. But sometimes you can go as far as... I could have a hoodie downstairs on the chair. And I could say, babe, can you hand me that hoodie downstairs on the chair? Simple. Babe, can you hand me the hoodie downstairs on the chair? I would think she would just go downstairs and get the hoodie on the chair. She would go from here, from me saying that, to downstairs and think, he's got hoodies in the closet too. He probably hasn't worn them. He, I don't think he knows that. Let me ask and see if he wants one of them too. So she'll say, babe, do you want the hoodie in the closet or do you want the one on the chair? Because you got ones in here. I just want to let you know they're clean. And then I'm thinking, damn, like I just wanted the hoodie on the chair. But she's thinking, I just want to give you some more give information. You yeah, I want to give you this. But to me, I'm thinking, damn, why not just go get the hoodie that I asked for? And her, it's like, why can't I just give you more options? So that's where... A perfect example of where we could clash. Okay, but in that scenario, that would like infuriate you where it's like, why are you upset and just saying, why, why, like, yes, I agree that I probably should just not try to put my own thoughts or logic into something so simple. When I do, I'm not going to say but, when I do, is it not easy enough to just say, no, I just want the one on the chair. But you have to be like, why Why you got to tell me about the ones in the closet? Didn't I ask you for the one in the chair? What's so hard? And it's like, I was just giving you options. I wasn't doing anything wrong. Why couldn't you? No, just, you're and, not. And, and again, I acknowledge that I probably, not I probably, I acknowledge I think, that it would have just been <laughs> easy for me to give you, you the hoodie on the chair. And we're just making this scenario up. Like, right. we never have no stupid I was arguments I think, like that. And I don't want, want to word this the wrong way, but I think it's like, it's like if you ask me to go do something, you want me to follow the instructions. So I think without me saying that, that's probably what I'm thinking. It's like, I just asked for the hoodie downstairs. Now I, I just didn't been trying know, to help. And, she just, and from, from me asking her that to downstairs, then she'll ask me three other questions. Do you want the hoodies in the closet? Did you see these? I cleaned these. You got these here. And it's like, now she's making me second guess. Do I even want the hoodie on the chair? <laughs> Maybe I do want the one in the closet. See? So that's where it's like, damn, and I, didn't give I don't even know my own thoughts. <laughs> like, I thought I wanted the hoodie on the chair, but maybe I do want to look at the one in the closet. And I'm I'm a little mad about that. I'm a little mad about that. Okay, so going back to what we were saying about, you know, knowing how to fight is subject. Yes, there are some things that's like, I feel like people shouldn't call each other names. But again, if that works in one relationship... But, but the pushback is, how does that work? Look, okay, think about this, right? We don't have we don't have mad sex. That's just our thing. Like, it, not saying like uh, every time we have sex, it got to be some love making session. And shit. No, like no. it can be a quick wham bam, thank you sir, wham bam, thank you ma'am. You know, a quickie, whenever. It doesn't have to be a whole love making session. But we have to be in a good space, like. Right. It can't be that I ain't speaking to you, but bend over. Right, yeah. But for some people, they're okay with that. So that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how you but can... I don't know what it, the, what that equates to. That's just mad sex. It, I don't know what happened prior to that. If you have an argument where it's like, you fucking pussy ass nigga, you ain't shit, you ain't... And, and, and you a fucking fat bitch, and you, you this... And then an hour later, it's like, how can we come back from that? How can we say sorry Maybe people, that? Maybe so people may have past trauma in their life where they're used to coming back from. So that's why I'm saying I don't know how. We know that doesn't work for us. Also, we know, and people might think that this is crazy, but I know this comes from my childhood trauma. This is going to sound real crazy. I don't care how bad we're, we're arguing. Don't holler at me. So again, that's why I say you, knowing how to fight is subject to the people because to somebody else it's like, of course it's an argument. We're hollering and screaming. Like, that don't mean nobody's swinging. That don't mean nobody calling names. But people holler but and we, scream in an argument. But I for me... I used to me, think that too, though. And we, we've had arguments where they wasn't loud. Exactly. We've had, like, 
like intent arguments where it where goes it back and forth. And we may <coughs> our voices may elevate, but it's a difference in your voice elevating and then hollering. Like, and, and the thing with me is when I get to that point, if I get to that point where I'm hollering, I don't like that because that's when I stop thinking rashly. That's when it's like. I'm like holding my lips because I'm ready to break all the rules. I'm ready to call you names. I'm oh, it's making me emotional just thinking about it because I don't ever want to go there with you. So that's why it's like, let's leave it here. Because when it gets here, now I don't care. Like mm -hmm. now I feel like we in fight mode. So whatever I say, I but I don't it's but, <laughs> but I mean fight mode in the sense of like our words. I, I just don't want to get to that yeah. place because then it's like, I'm going to say anything out my mouth. And, and I love you and respect you. I don't want to say anything right. out my mouth. So that's why it's almost like once we start hollering, it's like you start shaking. I, like my hands start shaking and it's like. And see, that's the. That's and the, I don't want to go there. That's the balance because I was, am, I'm not saying like I'm never a hollerer. I am a hollerer. When I'm being misunderstood. And how many feel, times do I tell you, like, if we're on, having a on, conversation? If I feel misunderstood and you are a quiet person, like, you are a person, and to, to a hollerer, this is the, <laughs> to a hollerer, there's nothing worse. I mean, there's nothing worse to set you off when you're hollering and somebody's like, stop hollering. Can you stop hollering? Like, just with the calmest mood, like, can you stop hollering? Like, that makes a vein. It makes smoke come out your nose and horns grow out your ear and you like a bull. And that's something that I'm learning in therapy and how to how to channel. And I've something that I've learned over the years with you just by adapting to our relationship right. and how we argue. Because I know and those intent arguments that we had where it's quiet, not I mean not not quiet, but right. we're not hollering. It's all about listening. Mm -hmm. Because if I feel like you're understanding what I'm saying and you, you're you like letting me talk and then you come back with something that's pertinent to what I said, mm -hmm. then I know it's okay. Then I'm going to listen to her because we're she's not just saying shit to be saying shit. Now, I'm mad and she's saying shit to be saying shit. Now, we just going in each other's mean bags to throw stuff back at each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, if she's listening and she's sitting there looking at me and I'm getting it out. And then she responds to something that's that's germane to what we're talking about. Then it's like, okay, we don't have to holler. And what so. I tried to, I've tried to explain to you for years: the more you holler, the less I hear you. Because when you're hollering, all I can think about is he better stop hollering at me. He better stop hollering. <laughs> so I'm not your words that whatever you're saying, I'm looking at you like. I like I don't hear it. I'm I don't even not even that I don't want to listen to you, like you are you're hot like I can't even think of any words. And and why I, is that a trauma for you when you never was hollered at? You know Like you told me that because I said to you you was traumatizing, you was like, No, no, my dad never hollered at me as a kid. My mom wasn't a hollerer, like right, no that, boyfriend ever hollered at me, so I just don't like it. <laughs> right. And that's it. Like, we got in trouble. My dad was very strict, but he wasn't like, rah, 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 like, hollering. And then he actually, now that I think about it, it would be like the calmest thing where, like, this is probably some for I this is some form of, like, child mental abuse. Like, you could do something on a Monday. You'd be like, you know, I'm going to get your ass. And, like, you knew you were going to get a beating. And you might not get a beat until Thursday for it. And you knew it was coming, but he would just be real calm about it. And then, like, on a random Thursday, he'd be like, when you finish eating, come upstairs. You'd be like, damn, I thought he forgot. Yeah. But, but he would <laughs> But I think for me, hollering, it just is it's almost like a signal that, um, that, violence is about to happen mm -hmm. and it's crazy because you're I, I i told you this when i was 15 i had one boyfriend that smacked me like other than that i'm and then you're I, right about that though just just so you know yeah. like as a man growing up in the street and in the hood when hollering occurs right that's only going to be but for so long especially with exactly. two men. exactly uh, now you're talking about the dynamic of a man and a woman but i know with two men 
there's only going to be a little bit of yelling. But I feel like with anybody, like I'm a grown woman. If I'm, I'm not going to be arguing back and forth with another woman. I right. feel like at some point, somebody's going to switch. Like I, it just is it's almost the like is, that's what's somebody's going to breach somebody's space. Exactly. So, so I feel like between us and. Like I said, I had one boyfriend when I was 15 that smacked me, one boyfriend when I was 19 that, like, put me in a headlock. But I haven't been in any, like, abusive relationships. I have, I did grow up in a household with domestic violence. And it's almost one of them things where it's, like, 99.99999% of me knows that you're never going to hit me. But when you start hollering, I just start thinking to myself, like, all right, like I started looking around the room thinking if he hit me, like what can I pick? Like, okay, you're six four, like your hands is two times the size of mine. If you punch me in my face, I'm gonna be knocked out, probably cold. But I think to myself, all right, how can I protect myself if Again, he swings? And to fight, I know knowing how to fight and us being together for almost twenty three years, and I'm hollering, I'm mad, I'm I've been like angry at her. Like, angry, angry because I felt misunderstood. But not near one of them times was hitting her I know. on the table. And I don't, I, like, that's never on the table is putting my hands on We didn't my get wife. to that part in therapy yet. Like, I don't know why like, my mind works like that. never, ever, ever a, 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 um, a next step. Like, yeah, I'm a foam and vein out my head and all that. But I'm not. There's never a thought in my head like... I'm about to punch her motherfucking head off. I don't know why my like, mind Like, we thinks. just arguing. So that's why. And it's why. like, that's Tasha. Yeah, I'm fucking mad at her right now. And we hollering and screaming at each other. But that's fucking Tasha. There's no way I'm going to fucking hit her. In my mind, like I said, 99.999% of me knows that. <laughs> when you start hollering, you know what it is to be, I, I think to myself... Is this the time when his anger is going to reach the point where he, for, not he forgets who I am, but like, is his anger going to take over? And maybe because I don't get angry like that, I don't know, no. I don't know how people manage it. Like, I, I, I just, you know, if I'm angry about something, I cry. Like that, if I'm really mad, I cry about something. And again, those few times, I, I can probably count on one hand in 20 years, the times that we have arguments and I am like screaming red. And, and probably not even one whole hand because I'm just not a hollerer like that. I can say what I have to say. I can use my words very well. And we, like you said, we can have some arguments and at the end, it can be a quiet argument and at the end we still not speaking but i don't feel the need to raise my voice to get my point across Plus, but you know, so, so i think i don't understand like for somebody else like or when is it going to get to the point where it's like it's going to spill over also though in our years of being together and this is probably like early in our relationship you're not good at it Good at what? Hollering and getting your point across. Uh, because you're I told not, you, I lose yeah, you, my you rationale. I just start saying anything. You can't any talk. You start saying, like, anything. Because like, I'm mad. You know it's what not it is? Like, it's nothing that, again, is germane to what we're talking about or arguing about. You don't... It's almost like you... Like, a you as a person, I think you feel like when you get like that, like... You know, like how people feel like I'm not going to lose this argument. Like I can't get my shit out. I can't speak. I can't do anything. You know what it is? Because I'm mad and I, but I'm still, I'm trying not to cross the line. So right. it's like, I'm literally fighting to keep my words in and not to like flat curse you out. <laughs> like I'm serious. It's like, I'm trying to, so you're right. It's like I, I start stumbling over my words because yeah, I can't. My mind doesn't work like that. I need to be calm. I need to be rational. And again, I, I know how to use my words well when I'm in a good, not even a good mental space because if we're arguing, that, but but it's, but it, I'm thinking rationally. So if, what, we're, if we're at that point and we're hollering, it's like my mind is fighting each other like, you're hollering, so curse them out. But re, but you dish your husband, you re, gotta respect him, so you can't curse him out, but so bad. But no, just call him that. So it's like, I can't really get my words out. Well, you gotta channel that some type of way. 
No, I have to not holler, and no, you I mean, have to not holler. No, I that's mean, how we fix that. <laughs> that's me channeling my anger. Is me not hollering. And, you know, and, and I how? just don't, I don't ever want to feel misunderstood. And we've been in situations where I felt misunderstood and I've hollered. And I've been in situations where I felt understood and we've talked. Now, I know that I can infuriate you in the way that we talked about this in therapy, that when things go down, like we have an argument, like you said, I shut down. Like, I will walk away or I'll just like, I don't want to talk about it. And I need some time. I need some time to process it because it uh, to process it and to pray and I swear y'all might think I'm I'm like exaggerating or making this up God always I, and I I think I'm no I'm not gonna say I think I know that's why we're still here today because I asked God like all right when we had this conversation be in the midst of us like it, it may not go the way I wanted to it, at the end we may still you know have some tension between us but I have to take that moment to, to just to sort out my thoughts mm -hmm. before we have a conversation because if, if it's at like a really heated place I I'm not like open enough to really hear you and receive you and I might be getting smart or like and it's just going to further and so I know it kind of infuriates you for me to walk away or for me to withdraw but believe me it's for your protection. I'm not I'm not I'm <laughs> not that way. I, if you that's the that's what I want to get to the talking and the conversation. I, so I want to get there too. Holler, I don't want to yell but I only do that out of um uh, a defense mechanism of, of of feeling misunderstood, but I if we want to talk in the heat of the argument, it's like okay, let's sit down and talk, let's hold hands, whatever. I'm all for that because I want to get to the talking and the root of it. Like I don't want to get a headache and be hollering and screaming or have to say sorry or you know just make a fool of myself. Like I don't. And then most of the time in those arguments where we are hollering, that's just it. Nothing solved. We're going to have another conversation exactly. later. Exactly. We're going to have another conversation the next day where it's calmer. Like, why couldn't we just do that two days ago? Yes, but it's like, okay, through all the hollering. So, what's me? some examples of fighting, um, of knowing how to fight other than um, not cussing each other out? Right. Not, not saying, okay. Obviously, hitting is off the right. table. Not right? saying That's things that you, you don't cops mean. If somebody hit, hit you. <laughs> You you suggested the cops did. I'm home? just saying, if you a woman, yeah, if you yeah. get beat at home, call the goddamn cops. Please do, yeah. And you know, and, and men too. I mean, don't have no woman going upside your motherfucking head, like putting their hands on you, and you just cool with that. Like, and I will say, you just think like it stays in the house. But when you come home or you do something wrong, she put her hands on you, and you just cool with that. Nah. And I will say, we're not making light of any any situations involving domestic violence. Um, if you, man or woman, are a victim, and again, like I said, I grew up in a household, and to me, it was surprising when my mom got out of a, you know, got out of the relationship with my dad. They had been together for 27 years, I want to say, and when, when she, you know, left, and people were saying like, oh my God, they didn't know, I was thinking, how didn't you know? And maybe... I don't know. It's just weird to me that people didn't know. So I know that people keep secrets. People live lives and they hide stuff, whether it's because of embarrassment, fear of starting over. My mom literally started over from having everything herself for all her life to living in my aunt's back room with my sister. So I say all that to say, if you're in a situation um, we'll, we're going to post some information about um, domestic violence, you know, domestic uh, violence hotline. the domestic violence hotline. Please know that there is help out there um, and just prayers to anybody who may be going through. And if you're a survivor, kudos to you. Yeah. So I say that. I'm sorry, you about to say something? That's the fourth time you keep saying I say all that to say. Well, no, you asked me a question yeah, about other what, examples of how no one's yeah, a fight. Other than um, cursing somebody out, like you calling each other bitches and hoes and pussies and and all and faggots and all that kind of stuff like that's not cool to use the, that kind of language um towards the person that you're supposed to love um well just not hitting. saying stuff say, not saying stuff that you don't mean because then what about secrets what you mean secrets? like you know stuff about that person's mom or you 
no stuff about them that well this is what i say like, don't say stuff that you don't mean because now you open up a new can of worms when when this argument is over then right. you gotta go back to well you know i said such and such and so don't say stuff you don't mean don't say stuff that isn't specific to the situation that's going on and sometimes that's hard like if it's not germane to the argument then don't don't yeah. speak about it and don't say stuff to purposely hurt the uh, and, and i'm not talking about name calling i'm just talking about stuff in general like that's why your dad that's why you ain't had no daddy that's why your dad left your mom because he didn't want you as a son like that's i know that's what i'm saying <laughs> like foul. you don't want it or you know that that's why that's why your other baby daddy ain't want you that's why i'm here taking care of you and this little kid because your other baby daddy left like he no would, don't wouldn't say this little kid he would say this little nigga <laughs> but I'm just saying, don't say stuff to purposely hurt the other person. Because, again, that's one of them things that you may not be able to um, apologize for. You may not be able to come back from. Also, jeez, um, I lost. Uh, oh, um, listen, that that's I, I think that's one of the biggest things when I people are that, arguing. Listen. Like, you're literally arguing. Everybody's saying. Uh, it's almost not an argument. It's just an intense discussion. And it's almost like there's something there that you want to understand each other. I don't know what it is, but it's like almost like an argument or a, it can go too far and now it's off the rails. But if you catch it at the right point, you actually can have a discussion and hear each other out and it, it, it not reach right. the demonstrative But what levels. I'll also say, even though this may not work for everybody, <coughs> don't be afraid to like step away for a second and then come back to it because sometimes you I'm might not a step away person but that's true but for, that's what i'm yeah. saying if that different works things you, that work for different for people sometimes you may need a moment you may be feel that's like all people that see red and shit like I'm, that i was gonna say you might feel like i'm too hot right now like my words is what i'm gonna say let me get my words together let me get my thoughts together you know it's it's five o'clock can we Come, can we meet back in the living room at six o'clock and have this conversation? And I would feel like, as the other person, I would feel like, I think I would feel like, damn, like I that's appreciate acceptable. that. Yeah, because you're you're trying to protect me. Like you yeah, don't want to say something. So if that works for you, then I think not being afraid to step away from the moment is, is okay. Yeah. I, I think that's I think okay. it should work both ways, depending on the situation. It should go. You know, it should be a courtesy thing. If if I'm intense about something and you see like I need to get it out, I would think that you would give me the courtesy of talking. If I see that, you know, I may have offended you in a way and you need a moment, I should I should give you the courtesy of saying, okay, this could possibly be my fault. Let me give her a moment and let her just chill. Mm -hmm. Let me ask a question. Um, you know how when um in Jay Z song when he say if me and nobody's leaving the house if me and my wife beefing, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel like that. Like, um, it like, wasn't leaving the house. It was I ain't going to nobody. nobody nothing. nothing. If it, well, yeah, yeah, and I feel the same way. I'm not going out with you, coupled up. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not two faced, and I'm with always representing us and nobody gonna know our shit nobody gonna know our business unless we want them to but at the same time some things are right intense you know and we going through stuff we can't couple up like we don't have mad sex because it's fake to us we can't do that so we can't suit and get booted up and go out and smile and take pictures like people going we gonna see that gonna shit when we look at the pictures. we've been some places and it's like a cookout or something that's like here go your plate yeah like but, but like she just well, going through the protocols, and I'm just there going through the protocols, not really wanting to be there. I never took it as a couple thing. I took it as him saying he like the like he's not going to nobody's nothing. And that makes sense. Like together, yeah, we're not like, going nah. to, to something because we know what that the song was about. It was about right. a, a, um, a wedding. My friends, are, right, yeah, right, right. So right. it's like I ain't going to nobody nothing when me and my wife is beefing. Like we fixing this. Yeah. Fuck everything else out there. Your wedding going on. I'm sorry. It's a gift, but we ain't showing up because 
we got some family shit to deal with. I respect that a thousand percent. No, no, I wasn't saying that he a was wrong. Percent. Again, whatever works for whomever. I just was thinking like I don't know if I complete if I if I am in complete agreement with that under all circumstances. Now, when things, you know, we know based on tabloids or whatever what was going on between them infidelity and had yeah, so like that's a different level yeah that's a different bro. level and you but i didn't if, fucked up with my own yeah. i'm trying to but if my sister's get getting married and gracious. we had an argument put your damn suit on and let's go to this wedding that's your sister <laughs> but you're talking about a friend it's like nah bro i ain't coming yeah Why? I, I already you. fucked up i can't get her in no dress to go to no goddamn <laughs> wedding with me Nah, bro, I can't ask her to do that. I feel you, I feel you. No, I can't do that. Um, Damn, we went in on that. Wows and woes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we was in there. No, wows and woes. <laughs> that is funny. Make um, it quick, wows and woes. All right, wows and woes. Um, I would say the wow of this week is just seeing God show up in our life, you know, and as he always does. Really quickly, I'm not big on numerology. Like when people say like, oh, the clock says 11-11, make a wish, or 4-4-4. You told four, me that four. the other day when I came home from work. You didn't let me finish uh-huh. my statement. Like I will say it like, oh, you know, oh, I caught the clock and it's 222. But I, I, when I say I'm not big on it, meaning like what it means and all that stuff. I know 11-11 is supposed to be like the reset and, you know, make a wish, whatever. Um, and I know in the Bible it talks about 666. The de- mark of the devil. I will say this. This is episode sixty six, and y'all, this is our third take, our third um attempt. This is a successful one because we made sure that we were going to be successful in this. But everything in me believes that the devil didn't want to see us loving each other and didn't want us to be it at this point. I think so. Episode 66, I think the devil showed up and tried to cause a divide, but it ain't nothing that the devil can do that God ain't bigger, stronger, and more powerful. So here we are. No so weapon, the wild what, No weapon form. Exactly. So the wild is just seeing God show up in our life. Woes. Um, the woes, I haven't looked too much into any like news stories and stuff, but hearing that it's been um a lot a continuation. So it could be a news story, it could just be a woe. A continue well, you keep cutting me. You don't know what I'm about to say. A continuation of the violence in the city. Um, I've been, I've seen like headlines that, um, you know, it was nice in this. <laughs> it was nice in the city. You know, the sun coming out, people outside, and the gunplay is going crazy again. So I just pray that this is an indicative of what is to come this summer, like it was last summer. But that was just a whoa, like damn, it's. Like we, it's just April. Like, it's like Pico's kid out there. It's crazy. Pico's kid, bang. Pico's kid, bang. bang. Whoa, Pico's kid, bang, bang. 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 <laughs> but don't make don't that was that was like such misplaced humor. No, it's like Pico's kid out okay. there. But yeah, so that was the whoa, just um, like damn. My what was your wow? My wow is that vacation is coming up. The woe is we don't know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So that's that. Wiles and Wills is over. But we do have vacation coming up, and I can't wait to be away with you somewhere. And, you know, I just, I love that. I just, not getting up early, not a care in the world, just chilling, sexing. Um, yeah, I just can't fucking wait. On the balcony. You know we go on the balcony. You know we go on the balcony. Talk about, um, okay. You talk about the violence, what you just said, and how it is in the city. And the other day, Frank Robert James um, was on 36th Street and Sunset Park in Brooklyn, went down the subway and shot 33 shots, 23 people injured, 10 by gunfire. Um, what is the, 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 what's keeping you safe when you go outside? What do you think it is? God. Because you know no, what? No, other than... Okay, you you can say God, and I understand that. But what else do you think it is? You that's the only thing I can think. A God, and I don't want to say like luck or no, anything. What, what's the thread between you and the rest of the humans outside? Like, what's the common thread that we all have with each other when we go outside? It's something to think about. And if you don't know, just say you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You. The common thread is that we we depend on each other. For our oh. safety and not to snap on each other. 
Like, you, we depend on a person walking down the street, not just to walk up and fucking stab you. Like, yeah. it's something that is kind of like, it's taboo to hurt each other. And you kind of just depend. You don't know if the person in line behind you. So, like, you, humanity. Yeah, you don't know if the person in line and behind you is having a fucked up day or fucked up life. And they about to just snap any second. Or the person in front of you. Or the person driving next to you. Or the person in the supermarket line. It's like, you just depend on people to like in this social construct to be like okay i'm, safe. I'm not gonna hurt nobody yeah, yeah. like i'm safe. I, like you're not supposed to go out when you're mad and punch somebody upside the head because that's but the people, social construct but having somebody go shoot up like 35 shots in a subway where it's hundreds of people just because you want to i was gonna say having people like, prove us fuck? wrong time and time and time and time again though that's yeah. why because it's one of those things where it's like you just almost have to pray and hope that your number ain't called today. That it doesn't happen. And because, you know, it was a time when I th I used to... I don't know. I can't remember if this was like during a pandemic or maybe there were some other shootings going on. I can't remember exactly when. But I used to have this fear of like, what if I'm in a supermarket one day and somebody decides to go crazy and start shooting? Like, no, you don't ever... Like, how many times have you been to the supermarket in your life? So do you ever expect it to happen? No. But is there a chance it could happen? Absolutely. And you just pray like the people who are in a movie theater in a row, the people who were in the <coughs> subway in Brooklyn, the, the kids that were in the school in, in, uh, in, in Newton. Like you just pray that your number ain't called that day to be in a situation. But people have proved over and over, and over, over again, again you talk that. about people like the subway shooter, the DC sniper, the Vegas shooter. Like, again, the DC sniper, I remember, had people mm. terrified. People were shot at Home Depot and killed. People were shot pumping gas. I, I went Nowadays, to school with we a girl a, whose father a, um, was killed. We live in a society in 2022 where it's like, you can't go to school. You get fucking shot. You can't wait on the bus. You get fucking shot. You, if you had a baby shower, you coming home, you get shot. Like, all those things happen in our lifetime where it's like, damn, we just depend on people not to hurt us. Yeah, but again, I don't, I, I think we depend on people not to hurt us. Like, there's a law out there that some people abide by. There's police out there that come when shit happens, but they're not there majority of the time before the crime happens. But it's like, damn, we just depend on you to be a decent person and not to rob me. It just depends on you to be a decent person and not to take your shit out on me. Yeah, but I think more than anything, we just hope and pray that we're never a victim. Because we know that there are victims every single day. So we just hope and pray that it's not our day or that we are able to react in a way that saves us. God forbid something does happen. Because I think relying on people not to hurt you can be... Um, that, that can cause you to be a little bit naive. You rely on God. I rely on God. But some people, what about people that don't rely on God? Like you, there is a social construct where we just depend on each other. And I know that's not how you live. Like you, you carry God with you. I carry God with me. But what about the people that don't? I think some of those people you, are either so horophobes or they walk around real tense and tight because they looking around like scared that something is going to happen. You, those are the people that have, you know, that I wish a mother effer would because they think anything can happen at any moment. Mm -hmm. And then you have some people that are just aloof like, oh, it'll never happen to me. But so I think, you know, it's a mix of all of those things. And yes, you do want to believe, and I don't want to be so cynical and thinking, Tuh, it can just happen any given moment, because you do want to believe that people are innately nice. And I do but believe... when you see a black guy punch a Chinese lady 125 times and kick her seven times, like, yeah, I do, But person. I do believe people are, the, I mean, and, and let's be realistic, there are criminals that do horrible things out here. There are far more people that aren't criminals right. than there are criminals. I agree. But you just have to pray and hope that your paths never you cross. Run into a criminal. Right. Things never. Your, your life doesn't align in a way that you become a victim. Because to be honest, we don't know what tomorrow holds. So every, but you, you, you know, that's tough to walk around every day. 
with that intensity of I'm, I don't want to be a victim. It is. You can you so that's why you have to be like you're a, on guard everywhere, and it's like again, I'm getting some lunch meat. I don't know that this guy mm -hmm. who's bigger than me, maybe he's standing next to me, six nine, three hundred and twenty pounds, just broke up with his girl or just lost his daughter. And something go wrong with the lunch meat line, and he just snap. Or the man that's five three, a hundred and twenty pounds, on, yeah, yeah. He with he a trench snap. coat on. You know, you and you in the movie theater, he come in there, and he he just shoots everybody because he never had a friend. The subway shooter shot them people and went to Cat's Deli and had a sandwich. You know what it made me think about? Wow, that's crazy to just so. And, and I'm not making any and for excuses. the people. And, and I mean that's macabre and weird in its in itself. But you, a lot of people had, like, issues like, oh, how the fuck you just going to go eat a sandwich? And it's like, you know, you just you, you just you just killed these people. And I've seen some comments of people saying, D D Dylan Roof had Burger King. Like, I, was, what's the problem? So I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to make any excuses for the person. Was there, like, some mental issues with him? Because who does some, something? Do they know yet? He didn't look, I mean, of course I would think he has some mental issues. Not nothing on the surface you can see, like, right. screaming and hollering and acting like he had mental. No, he went and had a sandwich. How yeah. mental is that? You know what it made me They think? said he went on a tour, actually. Like, he shot the people, came out, caught the and train, walking and was there. walking around, went and had lunch. You know what it made me think about? About, so you know in the state of Georgia they just signed a law that made it legal for anybody to carry, to carry a gun. gun so just think if that was the law and you would have, and I don't really know I haven't digested how I feel about that yet about you know anybody carrying a gun but just imagine if this was in Georgia I don't know if they have a subway but if this was in Georgia and you know you got not everybody got a gun, but you got six or seven people and everybody pull out their guns and start shooting. Some people probably not trained, but they got a gun. Like you would have had <coughs> all kinds of chaos if other people had had guns and like started firing back. Can you just imagine that? That's what I'm saying. We Everybody can't have guns and be vigilantes and take stuff into their own hand. So we all have this, uh, again, a social construct where it's like, we, I just depend on you to not go as crazy as, you know, and hurt people. Like, I depend I depend on this person not to shoot the place up. Yeah. I depend on everybody in this establishment to have some sort of sanity and not go fucking crazy. But let's, so don't nobody go in the bathroom and start a fire. Don't nobody shoot the place up. Like, don't nobody do nothing that can hurt anybody in here. So when you go to, I mean, we haven't been in years, but let's just think after we heard about the Aurora, Colorado shooting in the movie theater we went to the movie theater and you remember one time i kind of like it was weird i kind of had a little bit of anxiety like once them lights go out, remember the door opened mm -hmm. remember that i do and and it but it was like the front door the mm -hmm. front under the screen i think half the movie theater was like <laughs> yeah like looked over like what the hell is going on so i say that to say in those moments are you thinking Hmm, I'm just going to rely on everybody here to be kind and not hurt anybody. Or are you sitting there like, God, just don't let this be my day. Yeah, but how many people have said, God, let this be the, you know, don't let this be my day. But that person has made a choice that overrides. You know, how I, okay, there's a plan for everybody and, and, and it, it's all set already. That's what we believe. God has it all planned out. But sometimes humans down here make, make decisions that intervene with that. That's why babies die and shit like that happen and people hurt kids. So I don't believe that kind of stuff. God laid a plan out for for, for, for a kid no, to I die or, or a child to be hurt. So when people do shit like that, I think they intervene in the plan. And, and down here, they make fucked up choices. I, I agree. But what I'm saying is for you personally in those moments, are you... Do you feel a sense of security because you're just relying on everybody to be good humans? No, no. Or are you it, just it, it, hoping it and wishing me, that it doesn't happen? That makes me feel unsafe to think about. When, right. I, when I saw this, it makes me think about, damn, like, like that's, I've heard that before. Like, that's all we depend on is for people to be safe around. Like, you go into, we went into a mall. Like, we just hope that everybody in here, and there's not one person walking around in here with a gun that's about to shoot somebody. There's not one person walking around here with a knife. When we used to go to the mall, I don't want to say which mall, but we go there, and that um, mentally challenged man was there. Every used time. to be scared as hell. Like, you didn't like when he came around. 
I, no, I did, and I just and felt he like used he to be gonna... real aggressive to people. Yeah. yeah, he used to be hollering and real aggressive to people, and it'd like be like every yeah, like we you don't know if he would have a, a you know pull a butcher knife out or something. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's scary to think, but at the same time, it, it's 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 one of those like you don't want to just walk around always thinking about it. Then you're gonna be like a nervous wreck. But you don't want to be unaware. So that's where like. And what about them people you see you walk past and you know this motherfucker look like he up to something. Right. Well that's when you, you wanna be, you hell. wanna have street smarts where you're like, Yeah, I'm not gonna just walk past this man that looks crazy because I don't wanna make him feel uncomfortable by crossing the street. Nah, I'm not I, make his ass feel uncomfortable. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's where street smarts come into play where you like, I'm just gonna mosey on across the street. I'm not gonna run from him and let him know that I'm afraid. But I'm just gonna be a be careful and watch my surroundings and take steps to protect myself the best way that I can, knowing in reality you don't have absolute control over protecting yourself from everything. So you just got to do the best that you can, hope that nobody is in your immediate surroundings that's thinking about doing something crazy, and just pray for God's protection. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> People should think about that. What keeps you safe when you go outside? Some people pack a pistol and they're going to say, my gat keep me safe. Right. You know, some people going to be like, God keep me safe. Some people got hands. and they Well, not nowadays. Hands don't mean shit when people got guns. But, you know, what you think keeps you safe? And you think the police and the law that we follow in the society is what's keeping us safe? Or do you think, like, it's, it, I don't know. If it's, a prob if it's a problem, I don't know how you fix it. But I just feel like, damn, we go out in these crowded places or around people you know, we speak, we smile at people when we make eye contact, but you don't know if that's a fucking killer. You don't know if that's somebody that'll hurt you. You don't know if that's somebody that'll rape you or somebody that's watching you. And it's just, we just depend and have, like you said, have to be street smart and be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Um, you know what's crazy though? This situation brought to light those um, social institutions that we feel are, are supposed to keep us safe. It was a police officer um, who could not call for help because his radio wasn't working so he asked the passengers to call 911 because he was in the subway right underground but you work but i mean the, the signal don't work underground like don't cops are always underground so you mean to tell me they can never call for help if something happens i, I think they call for i, I thought they, they the sing the walkie talkies underground it's like a cell phone sometimes your cell phone don't work when you go down there at&t work underground not all, not everybody's cell phone. Okay. So not only that, all of the cameras. Now, we know New York is one of the most expensive. I'm not going to say the most because I don't know if that's true. But between like New York and Miami and L.A., it's one of the most expensive places to live. All the taxes and stuff that they pay. None of these cameras. Y'all got all these surveillance cameras. And it's not like, oh, that camera was out. They have no footage of this happening because none of the cameras were working. Well, they have, well, I think they was iPhone pictures of people laying out bleeding. Yeah, people's yeah, phones. Are, uh, the, yeah. the cameras yeah. in the train station that the city taxes but and you know municipal what? dollars I are going to. I expect that shit not to work. You're talking about the New York City subway. I expect that shit not That's to work. That's insane. Like, I, don't, I, I wouldn't even... If you ask me, do I think the New York City or I, do you think the Philadelphia uh, is the subway? I would say, eh. Like, it's not surprising that the camera don't work. Well, oh, well, okay. Let's say in a subway station, how many cameras do you think they have? On one stop, Like, let's say Susquehanna Dolphin. Okay. Yeah. 2025. So, not one. You wouldn't expect one If there's a glitch in the system, work? they all link together. If, some, if the electric's out, if it's a bad wire, they all shut down. And if you got to call, who you call them? Who you call? You always say you got uh, facilities. You got to call facilities. <laughs> and you got to get an appointment. Yeah, you got to get an appointment. And that shit ain't popping like that in the subway. Like they coming down. Yeah, let me fix the cameras with That's the ladder and shit. That's unacceptable. And I'm not saying, you know, I know we live in such a litigious society. Everybody wants to sue for everything. But this is something that the city should be held liable for. This is this man's fault. But, but... Y'all, y'all allow the steps that y'all took. They let the train go. You know go. what they're going to say? He went down there. He was going to go down there and shoot regardless. The camera systems was a thing where we wouldn't be able to catch him, record him. So y'all didn't, Zach. 
It yeah. was a boy yeah, named I Zach know. or a man yeah. named Zach that caught him. Yeah. Like in a That's bakery crazy. shop or yeah. something. After he had a, he was getting a, a dessert after yeah. he had a sandwich. A Greek man caught, he's like, I want everybody to, and he kind of spoke to what you said. I want everybody to be safe walking along the street. He saw him and caught him. The police didn't even catch him. Yeah. How insane is that? that? That's what I mean. It's crazy to think like, you could walk, you know how many people walk past him? And yeah. he just shot 33 So that's why I people. said when you talk about the thing, what keeps us safe, you know, we all might have, but the things that we think are supposed to, that we pay for, and I, we don't live in New York, but they, police, would, video cameras, like those they, things are supposed to keep us safe. And somebody said, hey, can I help you? Yeah. And he said, yeah, I want a pastrami on ride. And he sat down and ate and they took his money. Like, well, I not knowing this dude they probably just did, killed, yeah. fi I mean, just shot 15 people. They probably didn't have his picture, like, up on the news that fast yet. That's crazy. It um, is. That's crazy. Yeah, just, just think about that. What makes you safe um, when you walk outside and how you feel about people? What's your beef? Um, who that? Short, keep it short. Yeah, um, you know... I, I don't, I don't think, I'll, you go first. What should be? My beef is just, I saw another video of a cop wrestling with a, um, a black man on his back, took out his gun, and a gunshot went off, and he shot him in the back of his head, and he kind of fell underneath him. Like, he was on his back, and a dude was kind of getting up off the ground, and the cop reached for his gun and shot, and then they just both went down, and the dude, what, he wasn't moving. And the cop just like put his hands up and looked and shot him in the back of his head. Wow. And it was just like, damn, like he was wrestling to get back up. I don't know what for. I don't think he was armed. He just didn't want to be arrested. And he was wrestling to get back up. And it was cold outside because you could see like the, the smoke, smoke coming, coming out the cop's mouth. And he was just like, get down, get down. And he took his gun out while he was wrestling. Get down. And you're bah! And they just, and then the cop looked. And then you, like it was written in there, like he shot him in the back of his head. And you know, you gotta think to yourself, right? As a police officer, not of course we're not police officers and we're trained. You're wrestling with somebody. You're behind them. Why are which you is reaching, the better position? Right. Why are you reaching for your gun anyway? Joe Rogan would say if you were behind somebody and you knew judo, if you knew if 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 you knew how to do that, that's the best position to be in. Okay, let's take out the fact maybe he's not a martial arts expert. But what are you pulling your gun out for? Any Like, in that moment, what else was you going to do with your gun but shoot him? I, it almost feels like that was his intention. Yeah. Because in that moment... He can't see you pulling out your gun, so that's not going to... It's no fear in him of you pulling out your gun. Right. he can't see it. Right, so, <coughs> so what else was your intention other than to shoot him? Like what? And as a and I'll say this: I ain't no gun expert. <coughs> I know how to handle a weapon from going to the range a few times. Thank God I've never had to we use have to it. Go back. Yeah, I've never had to use it. Um, you know, in a real life situation. But one of the things that I know that I was taught at the range is you never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to pull it. Mm -hmm. So there's a way that you hold the hold gun. And you, you know, have, this is your trigger finger, but your finger is alongside of the gun. You don't put it on the trigger until you're ready to pull it. So how don't you know this as a police officer? I've held our gun, not like in a real situation. But you know what a cop will say, like, I thought my life was in line, was, was, I mean, was in danger. Because you were on his back. I didn't know if he was reaching for a gun. Wow. Like, we was in a scuffle. You know how that shit will play out. Like, that's it's, it's wrong. And that's that's my beef, is that I just seen another video. It was on D.L. Hubley's page. Like, he posted it, and it was one of them... Um, Warnings, yeah. yeah. Like I, I saw it, and I scrolled past it on quite a few pages because I don't want to see yeah. another person And it was like, killed. damn, just it just happened again. And it was like, wow. Like, And you read the comments, and it, probably the first hundred comments was... Um, Damn, they letting they they just letting people get murdered on IG now. Like you know, a person have an opinion, they page get banned, but we can just watch murders. I and it was like, what the fuck? Like, and it was like, damn, what did I just watch? The dude die, and it was a, another comment. Like, what are we watching here? Like, people was just kind of. I back agree. And it was like, damn, you have an opinion about something, a, a politics or something. They ban your page for thirty days, but we just on here watching murders. Guess what? Um. 
I and I know we talked about this. And this is a real live murder. Like this ain't a movie or a cartoon or nothing. We talked about this before and I intentionally protect my mental space because I have seen far too many murders in my life and guess what? They've all been on social media. Mm -hmm. I have never seen anybody get killed in real life. So I he knows I we have an agreement. Don't show me that anymore. I don't want to look for myself anymore. I've seen far too many people be killed. So you I agree. A social media just like on the news, they it censor was like, stuff. That's the time it made sense. All the comments made sense. And yeah. it was like damn like wow there's like everybody is right. They're snapping back right. Like you have an opinion based on politics or or the goddamn ban vaccine your page. Yeah. or some shit, and they'll ban your page or take you down. But it's just people posting murder. And people gonna say, cops. "Oh, it's for awareness." Let that awareness be shown in the courtroom, yeah, the like place of cops. public opinion. And then you think about this: when people have to be called for jury duty and stuff, everybody done seen everything. Like I personally, yeah, it was on earthquakes. It was I will on DLs, not it was on watch. Sean yeah, and I agree. It's it's too much. Act access to stuff my beef is this and i'll keep it short i kind of alluded to it earlier the violence that we're seeing i have seen many stories and it feels like um i'm having deja vu because i might have said this before the victims are getting younger and mm -hmm. younger and i know well it's real life but it's not our it's life even watching one. okay even watching first 48 I was watching, it was a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old. So this isn't just a Philadelphia issue. It seems to be a nationwide gun crisis. When we have all this money being sent to Ukraine or them asking, I feel offended when play, when like Wawa or something asks, do you want to donate money to the or Ukraine crisis? Yeah. Like, do we want to donate money to the gun crisis in America? Joe Biden, you're confused right now. You he, Did you see he went to shake hands with an invisible person? Person. No, he did. He saw somebody. He went to shake hands with an invisible person, and then he would. You're so confused. You don't realize what's going on here. Like, let's help the gun violence here in this country because these babies. I guess we get locked up. The forty and fifty year olds, they're all locked up. The thirty, you know, the the thirty year olds and twenty year olds have been killed, and now they're working on killing the teenagers. It's crazy. Let's please, please, and, and I don't even know if any of the shooters are watching this, but if it's your brother, your cousin, your boyfriend, your husband, your baby father, let's talk to these people about not shooting each other. It's 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 so sad. I, I'm, I'm so afraid for my nephews. Kyrie is, you know, out here 25 years old. Kenyan and Walir and Tug are 18 years old. You know, Deshaun is 16. Ryan is younger than that, so he's not out there. But, I mean, it's like I'm so afraid for the young men. And not that women are getting killed, too, but it's it's it's, it's scary. It is. Um, That's the beef. Um, three grams. Barclay Center uh, comedy show, T.I. got booed. You know he doing comedy now. He got booed, like booed hard. Yeah. Video of it. Booed, booed, booed. Get your ass off stage. Can booed, I tell you a secret? Boo, 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 <laughs> boo, nigga, boo, 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 <laughs> nigga, boo. So the question is, nigga, boo. Um, can he do comedy? I I don't know. I, I seen haven't a seen snippet, any snippet. I seen a snippet of the show where he got booed, and he let off a joke. And it fell like flat. And it was something about being at the gas station and getting gas. And so let me tell you this. Just... This is a secret that I've been keeping. I'm going to let y'all know too. I'm going to tell you this secret. So he knows, this part isn't a secret to him. He knows one of my bucket list items is I want to do an a, a open mic at a comedy show. Like, I don't even want to tell nobody. I want to like tell him I'm going to Wawa or something and go to the open mic. I don't want nobody to be there that I know. I just want like three minutes on the stage to do comedy. Can he do comedy? Listen, <laughs> but I, I know it's scary. So I have not watched. I haven't even been following the stories because I don't want it to make me afraid okay. to do it. So that so I haven't like been in tune. But I saw the thing that you showed me. Outside perspective, he's a superstar already because he's known and famous, and he's a rapper, a, a, one of the top rappers mm -hmm. that's ever rapped. But do you think you can transfer and just like? I'm not saying I know what you want to do, but you also know that 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 
that craft is hard. We know yeah, that Dave Chappelle and hard. Donnell Rawlins, like, the shit is hard. Andrew Schultz, the shit is hard to get up there and make people laugh for an hour. Do I you think, think it's something that you can just do just because you're used to being on stage? I, well, okay. Like, when he was in front of that girl, and she was like, you know, I'm trying to do my thing, and this shit is hard out here. Yeah. And he was like, it ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. Like, that shit ain't that well, hard. Well, see, this is the thing. We've never seen his comedic side, so I don't know if he's funny. If he is truly funny, I think he can do it. I think him already being in the limelight helps to kill some of those stage fright, some stage fright that somebody who isn't. But think about Jamie Foxx, singer, awesome. His albums were amazing. Um, actor, comedian. Those guys are, Why are can't, those guys are anomalies. No, but I'm just saying, T.I. is so I think he can <coughs> if he's funny. I just don't know what his material is. And and guess what? We we were just watching something when it talked about um some comedians who flopped like early in their career mm -hmm. and they moved on to have great careers. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, I think it he he should expect to flop a few times. And hopefully perfect his craft if it really is a craft that he possesses. And, and and one of his shticks I heard is when he comes out, he tells people, if you if you hear a word you don't understand, raise your hand and I'll give you the definition. So I forget what the word was. Apparently some lady raised her hand. She didn't know what the word oh, anonymity mm -hmm. was the word. She didn't know. And he said it's the um, process of staying anonymous. Mm -hmm. Boo. That was another time he got boo. Boo, 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 fucking boo. Maybe because people were expecting like, him to a make joke. a joke out of it and not just really give her an answer. No, he so just maybe was people like, just hey, what like, you doing? What, where, where you from? What kind of work you do? And then he gives the definition of the word. And, and it's like, okay, boo. And people may be taken aback a, a little bit by his vast vocabulary. I mean, you kind of trying to come out here and do this to us. Yeah, and people may be embarrassed by that. Yeah. Like, who you think you are. Like, who you think gonna raise their hand and say they don't know something? Clifford Harris, I'm rooting for you. Okay. <laughs> Cam Newton comments. I, you know what? I seen that. Sorry, so I seen that. So he was on headline. million dollars worth of game, Cam Newton, and right. he was talking about. The, he was looking. Though he was fire. Mm -hmm. I like what he had on. I mean, I don't think I could rock them kind of hats because of my hair. He had a lot of mixed things going on. I don't like on, the but... neck thing. The, the, the scarf around the neck okay. at the tie. I don't like that. But the shirt and the jacket and the hat was cool. And I, I don't smoke cigars. I smoke real cigars. Um, but he was on, on 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 Million Dollars Worth of Game and we was talking about boss girls and, well, quote unquote, boss bitches and bad bitches. And he was saying a lot of the Instagram girls and a lot of girls of today, women, um want to be out here saying that they a boss bitch, a boss, a bad this, a bad this with that type of independence, but some of them can't even cook a meal and some of them don't know when to be quiet and let a man lead. If you're going to be in a relationship with a man, then why have that type of attitude? And a lot of people said, you know, who the fuck are you to tell women when to talk? You know how women would take that? Like, I guess I, I, think I would, I know how you would take it. You would, you would take it like, I understand what he's saying in a sense. Or, I don't. You wouldn't take it as offense. Yeah, I mean, so I think people took... And, and people you like saying Angela that... Angela Yee, like when she had a comment, it was just like, you, couldn't, you can't hear nothing, nothing through how you going, you know, that woman empowerment, how you going to tell me to shut up and but I don't think that's that ever going to happen. And it's like, no, he's talking about a certain group of women who you know, talk like that, who act like that, who really don't have it like that, but yet don't have, like, um, skills. So, okay, a couple things. I don't think, I think people, when you said that, I can imagine how people could take that literally in, you know, not knowing how to be quiet. I don't take that as shut up. And, like, if I tell you to shut up, you don't know how to shut up. No, it's... And the word he used, not to cut you off, was submissive. And you know when some women hear that, they think it's not the 50s. And, and to, to, to each their own. To each their own. My thing is this. I don't think that he meant if you don't know how to be quiet because if I tell you to shut up, you didn't shut up. 
it's knowing when to be quiet without anybody having to tell you you know when it's a moment where either your opinion is not needed or maybe you know your partner <coughs> is going through something and they don't need your input or maybe y'all are having an argument and you just need to have a moment to listen i don't i don't take it things. wasn't that's right. exactly how like he wasn't it. saying it literally like you don't know how to be quiet because i told you to shut up right. and you kept talking right i think that's exactly. very immature to think that he would say that now relating that to boss bitches ver like you know a lot of people you can you can consider yourself a boss bitch in many different ways. Um, but what about if it's that that particular way, that demonstrative, yeah, I'm a boss bitch and I'm doing it out here, like that type of way? You know what? To, for some for some, But men, at the same time, you actually can't go home and whip up a meal. Not like nothing big, but like a fucking rice, a meat, and a star. Like, I don't you know, think you cooking can't... is related. Because guess what? Some men might okay, feel like okay. you can I, do it. I agree that. I, I think... I, I... Uh, so this is one of the things that through social media you see a lot of conversations about well the man need to pay all the bills the woman shouldn't have to pay anything or you need to learn how to cook a meal and you need to be with a partner that is okay with what your expectations are and what you have to bring to the table if you have a partner that's like babe i don't need you to cook nothing i'm gonna cook or babe i don't need you to cook nothing we're gonna order this food or babe i don't need you to cook nothing we're gonna eat these tv dinners or babe just make me a sandwich i'm all right with that then if that is what works for y'all that works for y'all that doesn't mean she's any less of a boss bitch because there may be some man that for them that's not a requirement right. just like the it may be for some women a man paying all the bills may not be a requirement, requirement. as long as between them their the arrangement that they have is agreeable between them that works for them somebody else might feel like we won't go 50 50 on these bills and that's works for them so, so it's not a right or wrong way it's finding a partner that you are that y'all are of like minds so that your relationship will work. Do you think um, a man or a woman should go through their entire life not knowing how to cook? That's just a side question. Like, if you was a woman and you never, ever learned how to cook. I'm talking about fucking eggs. Like, you just don't know how to cook. I you think, think that's, that's good life skills? Even for a man, too. You Like, are you a man? You can't make a meal? Like, do you think that's just good life? It's almost like, to me, I equate that with knowing how to swim. Like, it's just something no, you should know you how can't, to do. No, I think that's too... Okay, I think you well, should... you need to cook yourself a meal? Listen, I think... I don't equate... <laughs> Not for nobody food. else. Like, what if you need to feed yourself? I think you should know how to cook. I don't equate that to swimming. You now, you might not know how to make. I'm not. I was going to say you need to at least know how to cook for yourself, like right. you said. Just to, in case you need to feed, I'm not talking about for no man or no spouse or no woman or yeah. nothing like that. You may you not like, be no top chef. Yeah, but and that's you know how to okay. put something in your own stomach if you need to. And you know what? I think you should at least have a. Des I think you should. Have now, you may not like it, but you should know how to right. do a little something. I think you should. I mean. But again, to eat to each day. some people didn't it don't grow make you up. a bad person if you don't. I just think it's a little weird that damn you don't know how to cook a meal or man you don't know how to put a meal together. Like I'm not just talking about women. The same thing for a guy. Like how can't you do that? How do you go through your whole life not knowing how to do that? Some people don't know how to eat though, and that's a, like you'll see some people that like well you know show a plate of dinner that they made and they'll have like um, craft shells and cheese. Corn, rice. This is one of your pet peeves. I knew you said this a while ago. Yeah, and People chicken on the plate. Like that's not a meal. That's like, why do you good. have rice and mash and, and macaroni and cheese? Like, what? Like that's not a meal. Like some people don't know how to eat. So, mm. so, and that might be a thing too. A man can say, "Oh, she don't know how to cook." She might know how to cook based on how she was taught. So maybe. In those moments, that might be a teaching moment. Hey, babe, let me, you know, my, and I ain't trying to give no um, um, 
promo or anything so i'm not gonna even say the name but my sister you know she knows how to cook but she told me she ordered one of those like boxes where like the um it sends you the recipes and stuff because she was tired of eating the same thing all the time so she pays this money and she gets and it comes with meals for the week so that might be an opportunity hey babe i'm gonna order this service for us it gives you all that she says you might have to add like seasonings but it gives you all the fresh ingredients you go through the recipe so maybe that's an opportunity for y'all to learn together in a relationship i think people have to look at those things maybe her not knowing how to cook she can't cook like your grandma but, but maybe she can toss something there's up there's nothing wrong with this comment i based on what based you on said, what I said no okay. i think and i saw the podcast that's exactly what he said verbatim and the submissive thing again i think people he said uh, there's women out here who speak like that the boss bitches who don't know how to be submissive who don't know how to cook and don't know when to be quiet yeah and i think you have women you, you gonna tell people how to shut up you I, what tell i me will how to say talk? is this as a man you have to know how to lead in order for a woman to want to be submissive exactly. a woman has to feel safe under your leadership to feel like I'm going to let you run this show. It took a while for me to get there. It doesn't mean I'm scrubbing your feet. I'm bowing no, down, submitting to you. She don't scrub my feet. She don't bow down. <laughs> she don't bow down. But it means that me. I trust your but leadership. She, lead. she, she, uh, she doesn't fuss and doesn't buck. Yeah, like, like, whatever, like, I don't say whatever you say goes, but there's some decisions that it's just like, okay, like, that's what we're doing, but, you know, the money, that's what, okay, like, I, because I trust your leadership, and I trust that the decisions that you're going to make aren't going to, your intent isn't to hurt us, your intent is, it only so, take one time to fuck it up. <laughs> so, as a man, yeah, you have to, you know, wanting a woman to submit, it's biblical. As women, as wives, we are supposed to submit. As men, you are supposed to lead, but be a great leader so that she will feel comfortable Would you submitting. Lead? Yeah. And um, one more thing before we wrap up, a lot of people, man, I don't want to keep just keep saying a lot of women, but a lot of people, women, think that submissive is tied to obey. I, and that's where the negative connotation comes in at. But it's two different things. But let me say this. Real quick. You are, you should obey your husband and your husband obey you. Like, I, I, I don't see, like. But they took that word out of the vowels. And then, you know, the language of submissive came in. And I'm telling you, for years and years I, and years, it bothered women to be like, No, I know it does. So that means I got to do what you say. And it's like when you get to the women empowerment thing, the word submissive is taboo. It's almost like problematic it's to say crazy. that. And you, it's I like got to do what you say and you, you got to do what exactly, I say. Exactly. I was going to say, I do shit that she tell me to do. But it's almost like they just tie that word to obey. And right off the rip, I'm not doing that. I'm not obeying you. And I get what you're saying, like, show me that you can lead, don't fuck up our finances, and show me you can run a good life. And I'll sit back in the passenger seat and let you drive, nigga. Yeah, as long as it's not harming me, as long <coughs> as I'm comfortable, you know, I can still do the things that I want to do within reason, like, we good. What's your third grand? That was it. Oh, um, third grand was, um, 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 what's his name? Elon Musk, want to buy Twitter for 41 billion. Oh, he wants, okay. I thought he bought into it, but he wants he, to he buy it all. He bought into it. He wants to buy it all. I think he bought some shares, 13%. Right. I saw that, but he wasn't like going to be a member of the board. Right. But I think he wants to buy, he said he offered to buy it for $43 billion. Then the deal went down to $41 billion. Wow. Do you know the difference between a million and a billion dollars? Like the significance? Like, I know you think a, a million dollars is a lot of money because we never had a million dollars. And it's like, the people Dude, who get You said the difference between a million and a billion? Yeah, just the significance. And we're going to end on that note for somebody, for just everybody to think about. But you know the difference between a million and a billion dollars and being a millionaire and being a billionaire. It's 999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,999,
You can catch us on all the platforms. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you shit. Peace. Love you.